Hey everybody, welcome. So apologies once again for giving you a recorded meditation. Uh, this week it's my son's graduation, so unfortunately I won't be around at seven o'clock to do an in-person meditation meetup. So hopefully this will work for you. Um, but as usual, we'll start with our mindfulness meditation and we're just gonna get right into that. I know you guys have probably had stressful weeks and I was pretty busy this week, although I did have a nice relaxing Father's Day weekend, so that was pretty good. Um, but let's get started with our usual mindfulness meditation. Now, you should be getting pretty good at this by now, but again, just a reminder that it's important not to skip over the relaxation phase. That's probably the most important part of any meditation technique is actually getting your body to the point where it is as neutral and relaxed as possible. As soon as you start to do that, then all of the tension releases from your body and all of that stress disappears. Your heart rate slows down, your blood pressure goes down, your breathing rate slows down. So you're reaping all of those benefits of that wonderful health essentially is what you're doing. You're putting your body into a, a state of relaxation where it's healing and thriving and it's digesting food very efficiently. But if you skip over that relaxation step, then you're literally going to spend the rest of your meditation noticing all of the aches and pains in your body. And of course, the first part is also to remove all of the external distractions from your environment. So any sudden noises or if you can hear talking in a room nearby, obviously try to eliminate as many of those things as you possibly can so that you can concentrate on your inner body, which is what we're going to do next. So as always, we start with three really deep breaths just to start that relaxation process and give that clear signal to your mind that you're about to meditate. So breathe in as much as you can, fill your lungs and expand them all the way. And then just gently breathe out through your open mouth. Let all of that stress disappear. And then once again, breathe in, fill your lungs, feel them expanding, get yourself nice and tall and straight, and then breathe out through your mouth and just feel all of that stress disappearing from your body. And then one more time, breathe in as much as you can. Feel all of that wonderful oxygen entering your body. And as you slowly breathe out, just feel your body now starting to tingle as that oxygen makes its way into your bloodstream and around your body. Now just close your eyes. Make sure you're sitting nice and comfortably I'm going to let you go through and relax all of your muscles yourself now. We've done this for quite a few weeks, so just starting with your toes, just work your way up and eventually finishing with your face. Just make sure there's no tension there. So I'm going to give you two minutes to just do that all on your own, but take your time, no rush, and just make sure that that spine is nice and straight.
Okay, now your body should be perfectly relaxed and your spine should be nice and straight with no tension in any muscles whatsoever. And just sit for a moment and feel how peaceful your body feels when you're in that state. If you notice any tension anywhere, just relax it. Let the muscles soften, let your shoulders relax and let them drop down. And then turn your attention to your breathing. Just notice the air as it goes in through your nose. Feel a slight cold sensation right in the bridge of your nose. And then as you breathe out, see if you can still feel that sensation. It's much more subtle now. But just see if you can notice that. So each time you breathe in, feel for that cool sensation. And then as you breathe out again, just see if it's still there. And at the top of each breath, just notice a little stillness that's right there, right before you breathe out again, like your breath just hovers motionless. That is your gateway into that peacefulness and the stillness. Just keep noticing that every single time. But the most important thing to do is notice your mind when it takes you off on a little story somewhere, starts thinking about paying bills or things that happened during the day. Just notice them as soon as you can and then gently come back to your breathing. And when I say gently come back to breathing, I mean, don't get upset with yourself. Don't criticize yourself. Don't say that you're no good at meditation. All you have to do is just come right back to following the breath and noticing that little bit of stillness. Now see if you can do that for 10 minutes on your own. You don't need to pause the video. I'll keep reminding you how much time we have left.
Okay, we have about five minutes left, but just keep noticing your mind. And every time it takes you on a little story somewhere, just come right back to following the breath. That's all you have to do. And just keep relaxing your body as much as you can. Each time you breathe out, just feel that relaxation even deeper. See if you can get to the point where your body is so relaxed that it disappears completely from your awareness. Okay, we have about one minute left. So see if for this last minute, you can remain so focused on your breathing that your mind doesn't even have a chance to jump in there with a conversation. Okay, now before you open your eyes, 
just slowly become aware of the room around you. You can probably hear some noises in the background. Just start to acknowledge those and feel how relaxed your body feels. And then when you're ready, just open your eyes and come on back. Now, it probably feels a little bit different meditating in your own space. Uh, you have a lot more control over that than when we're usually at the church, but you probably have a lot more distractions there too. You know, there's other people in the house and lots of noises that are outside of your control. So try to eliminate as much of that as you can, and that way you'll have much more success with meditation. It doesn't have to be completely silent, but as quiet as you can get it, and definitely without any sudden noises if you can help that. So we haven't talked much about mindfulness since we brought that up on week two. Now the meditation that we just did is a mindfulness meditation where we're basically putting our attention on our breathing, but we can also use mindfulness throughout the day. And it's a really great way to bring some of that peace and tranquility with you as you go about your day-to-day -day life. So mindfulness in the real world means paying attention to all of the physical aspects of what you're doing. Our mind likes to live in the future, always wanting to be doing something else or thinking about a better life somewhere in the future, or it's dwelling on the past and thinking about things that have happened in the past. So it's always in the future or the past, but never in the present. So if you can focus your attention on every aspect of what you're currently doing in the present environment, then you essentially stop your mind from jumping in there. And originally we talked about doing it very deliberately. So each time you pick up your remote control, just take a moment and really pay attention to the feel of the buttons, the, the weight of the remote control. You probably notice a lot of things on there that you hadn't even seen before because you always just pick it up blindly, look down roughly where the play button is or the, the button that you want, but that's it. You really don't pay any more attention beyond that. But there's a lot of detail in a simple thing like a remote control that you can just spend a few minutes studying and again, be very conscious of your mind jumping in there with conversations and actually see what the conversations are about. And you'll probably realize that they're thinking about the future or dwelling in the past. So just notice that and go back to looking at the remote control. And you can do that with pretty much everything that you do throughout, throughout the day. Every time you jump in the car, every time you pick up your car keys, look at the key fob as you press the button and kind of feel all of those sensations. When you grab that steering wheel, then again, just feel it and notice the different texture and the color and how the light changes as it passes over the steering wheel surface. So there's a lot of detail in there that you can use to keep yourself present. And again, notice your mind as it tries to distract you and take you away from that. And just bring it right back to whatever you want to do. And if you start doing that for a few minutes at a time throughout the day, eventually you'll be able to apply that to every aspect of your life from the moment that you wake up, putting on your clothes, brushing your teeth, making your coffee, drinking your coffee, running out the door as you grab the door handle, as you're on your commute to work, you know, look at the other cars and the trees, and you might find that your mind stops criticizing and judging things and just enjoys everything. You start to see things very, very differently. So again, just a little reminder to try to incorporate that into your everyday life as much as you can. And you'll start to notice that peace that you get with meditation starts to follow you throughout the day. And if you do get upset or angry at something, then just do those three really deep breaths and just allow that peace to fill your body. Get rid of that stress as quickly as you can so it doesn't even build up. So the other thing we haven't talked about much since week three, I think it was, where we talked about unconditional love and how you can use your mind to change the chemistry of your body. Our bodies operate in two modes, basically fight or flight, where it's basically looking for a perceived threat and trying to figure out how to deal with that. And then again, it shuts down a lot of your internal organs and it changes your body chemistry into 
quite a toxic soup that is designed to enable you to escape a conflict, but it really doesn't serve much purpose in our modern society. But it's still triggered whenever we anticipate a confrontation with somebody when we're driving or even somebody at work and you expect to maybe get a confrontation or somebody to judge your work, your mind starts to anticipate that and it changes your chemistry into that state where it's anticipating the threat. The other is uh, healing and thriving where your body feels at peace, where it feels safe. And so it diverts all of your energy into growing and healing and repairing your body and digesting your food to extract all of the nutrients. And ideally, you want to spend 24 hours a day in that state. Uh, if you do, I'm fairly certain that most illnesses and disease would simply disappear because your body is able to direct all of its energy and nutrition towards dealing with that. But instead, our minds seem to anticipate conversations and it sort of puts us in, you know, maybe not like a scary threshold, like where we're being chased by a bear, but it always puts us just over that boundary into that fight or flight where there's a constant trickle of those chemicals that help keep us alive, but they don't allow us to heal. And what I want to do next is do a little meditation where we basically perceive love and happiness and see how that changes our body chemistry. So a little bit like the um, loving kindness meditation we did, but this time we're gonna do a visualization and I'm gonna talk you through it. And you're gonna use your own environment, your own landscape to do this. Um, but what I want you to do is just sit comfortably, just like we're going to meditate. And I want you to just close your eyes. And I want you to just become aware of your body again. It may not be as relaxed as it was a few moments ago, but just try to get it nice and relaxed. And I want you to think about something that makes you happy. Maybe it's a, an old vacation you went on where it was just so wonderful. You have some really great memories from that or a person that you know that whenever you see them always seems to fill you with joy. Just picture that person or that scenario in as much detail as you possibly can. Build as much detail in there, the sights, the sounds, the smells. Picture you being happy and smiling as you respond to that. Just remember that occasion. Now I want you to use your mindfulness skills. And just look within your body and especially at your heart and just see how that feels. It should feel really warm and fuzzy and cozy. And the more that you feel it, you should feel it expanding throughout all of your body. Now I want you to imagine sitting in your living room, still with that same wonderful, warm, loving feeling. And I want you to imagine standing up and walking towards your front door. And as you reach down for your front door handle, just feel love towards it and feel happy. Just smile at that door handle and see if you can create that same wonderful feeling in your heart. Now, as you open your front door and look out into the outside world, I want you to feel that same emotion for everything that you see whether you have wonderful landscaping or plants, flowers, just try to feel really happy towards them. You're basically projecting your love towards those plants. Now, if like me, you have a lot of weeds in the landscaping, just look at those weeds and look at how precious they are and feel that same joy. Just look at them and smile on the inside. And as you walk out into your street, just look at everything that you see, your mailbox. Maybe it needs a coat of paint. But again, don't look at the faults and the flaws and the things that you want to fix or the things that you think need changing. Look at exactly how it is and feel joy towards it. Feel happy. 
Look at your neighbor's house and don't judge their house if you think that yours is better, but also don't feel judged if you think that their house is better. Just feel love towards it. Feel happy and feel peace and look inside your body and see how wonderful that feels. Now, as you imagine walking down your road and looking at all of the things that you see, maybe even a piece of trash on the floor, just feel joy towards it. And the more that you do this, and with as much detail as you possibly can, pretty soon it will become your default way of looking at the world. And even when somebody comes up to you and maybe says something mean directly to your face, you can still feel that wonderful joy towards them. You won't have the reaction that you normally get. I mean, wouldn't that be wonderful to just feel happy and blissful with absolutely everything, no matter what's going on? So again, let's just go back to that happy place for a moment the place where you started this journey, visualizing something that just makes you really, really happy, a wonderful memory or a person that you know, just visualize them again in real detail. And just once again, feel inside your own body what that feels like to be filled with joy like that. And if you can make that your default reaction to absolutely everything, then you'll have no more problems, no more worries. Things will just be as they are, but you'll never be upset or unhappy. You'll just be filled with this wonderful joy. All right, now come on back to the room and just open your eyes. Now, it's really funny me talking directly to the camera because it's difficult for me to feel that wonderful, joyful emotion. You know, when I talk to people face to face, I always have just a constant smile on my face because I'm just so happy to be there with that person. And as you smile at somebody else, you can see them smile back at you. So you're projecting your joy and your happiness on the world and it literally comes right back to you. Now on the camera, maybe I seem a little flat, but you know, I'm at such peace right now. You know, there's not a single ounce of tension in my body and I'm feeling internally just this wonderful, blissful joy. Uh, part of that is what comes from the meditation that we just did. And even though I don't meditate with you, I'm still feeling that same, that same feeling. And my mind is very quiet. And now that we've just done that little visualization technique, I'm filled with joy and it's purely internal. So it's very, very selfish. You know, I'm the only one that can feel this. But the lesson is that you can control that feeling. You can't control anything whatsoever outside there. You know, things are going to happen outside your control. You know, we, we have this illusion that we have a lot of control over our lives, but we really don't. There's so many things that can happen and change our plans for the future so quickly. So we have no control over what's going on out there and very little control within our own body too. But we do have control over our emotions. And if you can sidetrack your mind from getting upset with things and just feel joy and love all the time, then your health is gonna improve massively. You're gonna see the world very, very differently and you're going to interact with the world differently. And as a result, you'll see the world reacting back differently to you. You know, when you project love out into the world, it comes back to you in the, sing th the things that you see, but also the way that people respond to you too. So again, it's very, very selfish, but it does have an effect on the outside world. So, all right. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, next week, we'll be back at the church in person. And I'll send out an email with the topics that we're going to talk about next week. But I hope you found this useful and uh, hopefully it fills you with peace and joy and you start to see the world a little differently. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.